that we've got to acknowledge that this is the land that was first hit by colonisation. Tonight's about fighting colonisation and racism. In this country, this is where it started. We're on the land it started. We must acknowledge that. We must acknowledge the sacredness of the land we walked on because this was a sacred land. This still is a sacred land and will be forevermore a sacred land. There were fighters here before. Fighters came later and fighters are here now and fighters are coming through in the future. We have our future. We have a future warrior sitting in the front there, Elizabeth. Now, we must acknowledge this. It must be more than just an acknowledgement. It must be a deep sense of understanding about what we're talking about when we acknowledge. We can't just say, I acknowledge the country. We've got to say, what, what are we acknowledging? We acknowledge in the first point of racism, the first point of colonisation, the first point of racial hatred that come to this country, but we're also celebrating our warriors, women and men who fought. We just, see, unlike uh, Western civilization, we didn't, we didn't use just men warriors, we used uh, women warriors very well. People, have people ever heard of Chandamara, the warrior in Western Australia? He used a women's army and they wiped out whole colonies of uh, or platoons or whatever they want to call them, of soldiers. His women's army wiped them out. Now they were very matriarchal, so they were chasing him and the men around in the, in the mountains and the women were killing all the soldiers. I thought that was brilliant. You know. Tactically, it was brilliant. So, um, you know, that's, a, that, you know, what we've got to realise, we had warfare in every single nation of this country. Now, when we look at fighting colonisation, we've got to look at the First Nations people. 227 years ago, it started and it's still on. We're still fighting it. We haven't stopped. We never cede their lands. Not one, one tribe has ceded their lands. We have our sovereignty. And this government, in my opinion, that's in today, and every government that's been in, is an illegal government, is an occupier's government and has nothing to do with me. I said when I was a young man, I was charged with armed robbery, that I had not broken my traditional law, that I'd broken an imposed law upon me and the judge had no authority to sentence me to prison. Didn't stop him, but <laughs> I felt convicted of that. When I, well, and they did convict me of it. Um, but when I got sentenced, I actually then asked to be classified as a prisoner of war. That never happened. And I'm still actually, I'm still miffed about that because in, in, technically I should have been a prisoner of war. Many years later in a documentary I said I was never a criminal because I didn't break my law. I broke a law that was brought here by a pack of thieves, by people who slaughtered innocent people, by people who took over a, a whole country and called it their own. Now these people, their mentalities are still as alive and well in Parliament. Now having said that, that does, you know, I've said this this morning, I say it every, in every speech, that doesn't include people who come to uh, listen to talks like this because if you were of that mentality you wouldn't be here. Or if you were here you'd be throwing things at me by now. So, you know, I applaud people who come, who are non-Aboriginal and come and listen because this is where the future lies. If we're going to fight this battle, we're 2.5% of the population, we cannot fight it alone. It's absolutely suicidal that we fight it alone, but we need people to fight it with us. But that, the, the key word is with us. We're, one of the problems we've had in the past, in certain, um, in, even in some left groups, is. Uh, and they're certainly not the left group here, and they're certainly not Social Alliance. So they have been very good, and Green Left and people like that have been very good. But there are certain left groups who don't want to work with us, they want to work for us. They want to tell us what to do. They want to take the struggle out of our hands. No, follow us. And anybody who has a struggle in this country, we had the People's Climate March, which our group pulled out of last week, because they simply would not listen to us. And what we're saying is that we're, we've been fighting this battle for 227 years. If it's climate change, if it's about refugees, if it's about any issue you want to name, we've been at the forefront and it's about time society came into the fold and went to the warriors that have been fighting this battle for over 200 years. That makes sense to me. 
Now, people often say to me, oh, Ken's done this, Ken's done that. I'm nothing. I'm a product of those who went before me. I'm a product of proud people who fought before me. And I'm proud of the very fact that all I ever did was listen to them. That's all I did. You know, people listen to me speak in public and they say, oh, that was so wonderful. It wasn't wonderful. That came from my old ones. I remember one night, my wife will tell you this, I was uh, in Belmore Park. <laughs> I froze and I went to say to the MC, don't put me on tonight, I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know what to say and he's already introduced me. I went out and spoke for four and a half minutes, one of the most powerful speeches I'd ever said in my life and I was almost made myself faint because it was that powerful. That did not come from me. That was the old ones. I jammed up. I, I just completely froze. I, I had nothing but it was too late. There was a microphone there and bang, it came out. Later on, people were telling me what I said. I didn't remember it. So this is not me. This is what I've been taught. I've been taught by some of the best. And I've admired and respected some of the best. And they go back generations. I was sitting on the Nepean River one night. Pema Woy spoke to me. People, uh, non-Aboriginal people might think that's odd. Aboriginal people know what I'm talking about. He sat down and spoke to me. And I'll never forget the feeling I had when he said, keep fighting. Keep fighting the good fight. No matter who says what, keep fighting. If they kill you tomorrow, keep, keep fighting. Keep fighting with your spirit. Now we're looking at what's happening today in society. We're, we're, we've got a government who wants to fragment us. I've been out to La Kemba. We've got a government. In recent uh, months, I've been out a few times. We've got a government who's, um, they, they've been an expert in demonising our peoples. We've had generation after generation being demonised. Now the new trick is just to make us invisible in the media. When's the last time you read about an Aboriginal death in custody? Does anybody remember? When was it on 7, 9 or 10? It doesn't happen, right? When do you hear about babies being stolen out of RPA hospital just up the road, walking distance from here? Babies being stolen out of their mother's arm. Before the cords cut, docs are waiting there to take them. <coughs> this is a reality we're facing. What's going to happen with the Muslim community, they're going to be demonised and then silenced in the media. The media has made us invisible, so anything can be done to us and society will not know. But the first process is the demonisation of us as a people. This is what's happened to Muslim youth at the moment. We're seeing all this demonisation process going on. And I know what's going to happen tomorrow. They're going to start rounding people up. The 60s in Brisbane, we were very outspoken, all us young people. The mistake I made, I reacted violently against the violent system. I spent nine and a half years locked up. Three and a half years of that was in a cage, four paces square. I paid my penalty. They have yet to pay their penalty of what they did to me. They have yet to pay. I don't care whether they thought they could lock me up for all those years, but the treatment, and I won't go into it in this forum, this is not the forum for it, but I will tell you this, when I saw Guantanamo Bay, there was parts of that I thought were a picnic compared to what was happening in Bogger Road Prison under J.B. Aki Peterson. There was absolute torture of Aboriginal people and it went on on a daily basis. We got no rest from it. Not one bit of rest. Now we come from that background. Now we're going to get the same thing happening to young Muslims. And it's happening now. So they'll demonise and then when they brutalise, you won't get it reported in the papers. So when young Muslims get up and say I've been brutalised by, uh, by the police, people say, well, I never heard about it. If the media didn't report it, it never happened. That's what happens with us now. If the media doesn't report it, it never happened. Force, force removals of community in Western Australia, people think it's come to a halt at the moment. It's going on as I speak. But the government made a, uh, a media release. We're going to slow down the process till we make more have more consultation. No, it's happening now. But because the media is not reporting, it's not happened. This is going to happen with young Muslims. Now, I object to this as a First Nations person. I object to any oppression. I object to your oppression. I object to your oppression, anybody's oppression. I object to... People, uh, same-sex marriage, not being able to unite. Same-sex people not being able to have the same rights to unite. Who the hell are these people to come into this country where we had laws as old as time? 
who the hell are they to come in here and dictate to us who can come and live here and who can't live here and what lifestyle they live? Who are they? The people that are running this country have the same mentality as those people who just got off the boats 227 years ago. We have, there are, so, there are people in this, this community that have evolved, these people have not. They are still dragging their knuckles out of the caves. And that's all they'll ever be. They'll be Neanderthal men. And all they do is serve the capitalist system. You look at colonialism and racism, what does it serve? Capitalism. What does it serve to keep, you know, this thing about putting, uh, persecuting Muslims is about keeping us apart. Keep us apart and you can control the country. Create an enemy. Create an enemy so you can, you can all start hating Muslims. And while you're all hating Muslims, the, the capitalist system is eating up this country alive. And we're too busy sitting around listening to all the rubbish that's going on about it, Islamophobia. The only, thing, the only problem I got out when I went to Le, Le Kemba was um, my waistline. I thought, I thought you were trying to sort of do me over by feeding me up too much, my goodness. It was hard to cop. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's coming up with plates of food all the time. So, oh, I think I'll move in here. Yeah, so, yeah. But in all seriousness, you know, I, I'm a person who's been around a lot. If I think there's a fear of threat, I won't go near it. I'm not that stupid. Um, all I've felt out there is hospitality, warmth, and I've had good discussions with some good, strong Muslim leaders of their communities. And this is nothing like the dialogue that is coming out of the media. And we as people, and I say this at every rally, the, the, the answers do not lie with me. The answers do not lie with Lydia. The answers do not lie with Peter. The answers do not lie with any people speaking. The answers lies with us, collectively. All of us, joining together, creating a movement that tells the politicians, we have had enough. And I said in the session this morning, and I mean it now, some of you might have been in the session this morning, we have to punish our politicians like their children. Next election, vote the LNP out. The only alternative you got, I don't like that word, break it up, alternative. Uh, probably why I've got a problem with social, social alternative, they've got that name. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that, uh, the only other option we have is when we vote them out, Labor will come in, there is a, you know, they're, they're the same party virtually with a different name, they just spell it differently. When they get in, if they're in one term, vote them out. When the others come in, vote them out. Sooner or later, when people are one term governments, they might just start thinking and they might start listening. We're not being successful here. We might have to listen to these people because they're gonna keep voting us out. We are not getting our own way anymore. Punish them like the children. Take their toy away from them. Their toy is power. That's all they want. They, they don't want justice, they don't want equity, they want power. Take the power out of them. Grab the power off them because I am past asking governments for anything. I'm a First Nations person in this country, you are citizens of this country. Demand your rights to be heard. Demand it by telling the government what you think and do it en masse. Do it collectively. If I had my way, I'd have one million people of all countries, of all nationalities surrounding Parliament House screaming at them. Scroop when some of it would be obscene too. And I'd be screaming for justice for every single person that lived in this country. And together, there will come a day where we can do this. There will come a day. But I ask you now, I'm going to hand over to other speakers, but when you see First Nations people out at a rally, come with us. Come join us. Because we've been at this for a long, long time. We'll be at it for a long time yet. Because we will not give in. I refuse to give in. Thank you.